In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about various black and white conversion techniques in Adobe Photoshop. Hey guys, Mike here. You can find me on Instagram at VibrantShotPhoto as well as online at VibrantShot.com. So in this video, I wanted to do a quick uh, lesson on how I do my black and white conversion, something I'm act asked about quite a bit and uh, never really got around to making a separate video for it. The process is relatively straightforward, so uh, no real challenges here. You'll actually find that my conversion process is relatively basic uh, without any sort of crazy stuff going on, but I'll try and give you a few tips as far as you know different variations that you can experiment with uh, for achieving a fairly dramatic look in your black and whites. Before we get started, uh, shameless plug, just want to let you know I do have a new hair retouching course, so if you're struggling with hair retouching at all, be sure to check that out. I'm going to pop the link up for it here as well as in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, black and white conversion on this portrait of Emily. And the reason I chose this is because um, I like this portrait and I think the color looks okay, but I, maybe perhaps it could use a little bit more drama. And I feel like this particular portrait would be better served as a black and white, particularly uh, because we have some freckles here. And freckles, I find, are a, a good friend to black and white conversion. I find that always uh, looks a little bit more dramatic and interesting in black and white. So let's go ahead and just create... A group here we're just going to call this bw for black and white and then i don't actually use the black and white conversion layer for doing the black and white i actually use the same helper layer that i use for um, when i'm dodging and burning so when i'm dodging and burning i want to make everything black and white so i can see just the luminosities and uh, for that we use a solid color adjustment layer so we're going to do the same thing here we're going to select solid color and we're just going to go over here and pick uh, 128. So let's go ahead and have 128 all across the board for RGB. Uh, if you can't select it, um, then you can just always type the values, but 128, 128, 128, that's what we want. And then we're going to go in here and select color. So as you can see, that's going to kind of give us a black and white version without any real messing about of uh, colors like the black and white adjustment layer does. Uh, essentially, when you pop up the black and white adjustment layer, it sort of says, you know, how bright do you want the reds? How bright do you want the yellows, blues, and so on and so on. This just kind of does a straight flattening of the colors and gives you a black and white representation of that image. So the, that's gonna serve as our, our main conversion tool for getting a black and white. And so any adjustments we do beyond that, we wanna make sure they drop below this uh, adjustment layer because if you put anything Above it, there is no color. So let's say we wanna kind of put in a black and white adjustment layer now. If we start messing about with these values, you're gonna see that there's no effect whatsoever. But as soon as we drop it below the color fill, then the effect pops up. So uh, that is just something to keep in mind. Always have all of your adjustments below it. Certain ones obviously that operate on luminosity as opposed to colors, it doesn't matter. You can put them above, but it's just good practice to always put everything below so you don't ever have to think about it or worry about it. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is a curves adjustment. That is kind of the first place I always go when I'm doing a black and white adjustment or a black and white conversion. Uh, usually I would say 75% of the time my black and white conversion boils down to this color neutralizer and uh, a curves adjustment. And that's really the only thing that I do. Sometimes I want something a little bit more dramatic. And in this particular case, that is one of those scenarios where I do want something more dramatic. Uh, but we'll start with the curves adjustment. So we're gonna just kind of bring this down a little bit and we can see already that it looks a little bit better. I think the skin was a little too bright uh, before. We're just gonna turn that down a little bit. Now, obviously I've affected the shadows as well here, which I don't really wanna do. So I'm gonna use the blend if to just kind of get rid of that in the shadows. So as we drag this, we can kind of see where uh, the effect is being taken out of. And all this is really saying is that don't apply this curves adjustment anywhere where the luminosity is darker than this line. So anything in here is not gonna be affected by it. Now, obviously you can see that there are some areas that are just like straight cut off and that doesn't look good. There's no kind of feather or transition. So for that, we're just gonna hold down the option or alt key and we're just going to split these bars over here and just kind of create a little bit of a feather for that transition. And if we hit command Z, we can kind of see what that does. Uh, and if, you know, if we went too far or didn't go far enough, we can always go back and revisit that. Perhaps we did go a little bit too far. So I'm gonna just kind of nudge this back here and bring that back there. Okay, so that is kind of pulling out the effect from some of the shadows, which is good. And um, I think, you know, for many cases, that would be more than sufficient. Sometimes what I'll also do is throw in a selective color adjustment layer. So I'll go into here, drop that below the curve, 
and perhaps I want to add a little bit more contrast in the highlight areas. So I'll select whites and then kind of bring the black point down here. And again, with black and white, you can be a little bit more dramatic with some of this stuff. You can really kind of push it a bit more than you can within a color version of the image. So I think somewhere, you know, around minus two or minus three is fine. And then going into blacks, I might say, you know what, it's still a little too contrasty in the shadow. So let's just maybe bring this down one just to kind of wash it a little bit. So it's not quite so contrasty. Again, it's really your choice. If you like the contrast, then leave it alone. Everybody's tastes are different. So let's just kind of toggle that on and off. And that's just all that's really doing. And again, of course, we can adjust opacities in any of these cases. Now, one thing that I find is always a good thing to check is let's turn off our black and white here and let's go into our channels and uh, take a look at the blue channel. Sometimes the blue channel I find looks a little bit interesting. And that's sort of an indicator that maybe we want to play around with the channel mixer a bit. And uh, in this case, we do. So I'm going to go ahead and re-enable all of these channels and then go ahead and turn the black and white grouping on again. And for now, I'm going to disable uh, the curves adjustment and the selective color. So let's go ahead and in our adjustment layers here, we'll select channel mixer. There you are. And uh, in the presets, we'll go to black and white with blue filter. So there it is. And as you can see, that's going to give us something that is a lot more dramatic and kind of toggling that on and off. I think that looks pretty cool. But again, you know, it's per perhaps adversely affecting a few different areas. So what I want to go ahead and do is once again, apply a bit of blend if to that. So maybe we'll cut off some of the deepest shadows here and just kind of transition that a little bit there, just so that it it's not affecting the shadows too much. And let's go ahead and see whether we like that effect. Hmm. Perhaps in this case, we're actually we're actually better off without the blend if I think unlike in the curve, the shadows actually probably had a little bit of blue to them. And in that particular scenario, the, the shadow areas are actually brighter than they would be uh, if we took out this channel mixer. So basically, what the black and white filter is doing with the blue channel is it's saying, you know, emphasize anything that's not blue, like make it kind of darker and anything that is blue is going to be a little bit lighter. For example, I'll, I'll give you a demonstration of that. If we go into selective color now and we go into blacks and I take out yellows, you can see that the it's really kind of washing out the image because what we're doing is we're injecting a bunch of blue into there. Let's turn that off. You can see there's a ton of blue and the channel mixer is kind of offsetting that because we're, we're sort of brightening everything that's blue and darkening everything else. So in this particular scenario, by adding the blend if to the channel mixer, we're saying don't apply it in the shadows. The shadows had some blue, so the shadows are actually getting darker instead of lighter. Kind of confusing, but it's important to understand how that channel mixer works. And of course, you can experiment with some of the other uh, channel mixer modes that we have in here. So if I just double click this, you can see the presets. There's, um, you know, orange filters, green filters, red filters, and so on. Feel free to experiment with those. Now, what I tend to do with the channel mixer is I never really use it at 100%. If we turn off this color fill, you can see right now it's still black and white, right? So this this color neutralizer, let's just call this um, color remover, just so that we know. Um, if we have that turned off right now, there's no real difference between having it on and off. But however, because I want to bring down the opacity of the channel mixer, it's going to start to become important because if I bring this down to, let's say, 70%, now we have a partially colored up image. And um, if you really like this like crazy desaturated look, then that can be a look as well. But for me, I want an actual black and white. So as soon as I turn that back on, we're back to a black and white with this partially applied channel mixer effect added to it. Now, one thing that I find with the channel mixer is that sometimes it adversely affects the hair. It will really kind of cut off uh, areas of transition, particular areas are a little bit darker and it'll sort of wash it out. So in that scenario, just feel free to, you know, grab a, a brush and uh, painting in black, you can just sort of remove it from those areas just by masking it out. So that is an option for you as well. You can certainly fine tune it more that way. And let's just kind of see what that does. Yeah, so you can see that having it turned, having the mask turned off is dark. And then if I turn it back on, it's sort of brings back some of the, the detail here and the lightness. So that, that is something that you may want to also do if you're using the channel mixer. And uh, one other thing that we can look at is the actual black and white adjustment layer itself. So let's go ahead and move that underneath the channel mixer, because once again, the channel mixer being at 70% opacity, it is, you know, applying a black and white effect to some extent It's basically leaving 30% 
of the color kind of left over. And so if we want the black and white to um, apply the effect that we want, we need it underneath the channel mixer layer. Now what we're gonna do with this black and white adjustment though is we're not gonna use it in the traditional sense of actually making things black and white because right now it is, it's just making the image black and white and it's actually screwing up our channel mixer. If we turn this off, you can see the channel mixer is now um, functioning again, but as soon as I turn it back on, uh, the image is black and white, so our channel mixer with the blue filter can't do anything because there's no blues. So we're gonna go back to here, and in the black and white adjustment, we're going to use the luminosity blending mode, which is really just going to apply it uh, as a luminosity adjustment. And what that really does is it's saying, okay, you know, make my yellows brighter, make my yellows darker, whatever I wanna do there. And for example, my reds, I can make my reds darker. And so once again, that's kind of introducing more drama into the image and we can go ahead and go into our blend if, once again, see if we want to kind of clip that out from anywhere. You know, before we do that, let's go ahead and go into our red uh, channel here and see if we want to maybe just work on the red only because that's where really the skin tones are sort of residing. So let's see how that effect looks there. I, I have no idea because I haven't actually tried this yet. Um, I rarely go into these, but that's actually, that's kind of cool too. So we can, do something like that and of course you can do it on the gray as well but red is really targeting the skin so that's really kind of getting pumped up and dramatic and of course now we can scale this back into something that is not quite as overdone perhaps at 65 percent or so let's go ahead and turn our selective color adjustment back on and that's kind of neat as well so that is that's maybe where I'd leave it. Perhaps it's a little bit dark. If it's dark now, what you can do is you can actually bring a curve in here and perhaps lighten it up a little bit. So let's go ahead and just kind of see what we want to do with that. You know, perhaps somewhere in and around there is good. Now for me, that's probably still a little overdone. So I'd probably scale back on a combination of the channel mixer and the black and white. I mean, we could um, group these together and call them something like intense and then maybe reduce the opacity overall for that to 90%. And that's maybe where I would stop for this particular image. Like I said, 75% of the time, I just do the color remover and a curves adjustment to darken. And that's really all there is to it. But sometimes you want something a little more dramatic and that's sort of the process I take for that. Now, one thing you need to be aware of when you're using the channel mixer and that black and white uh, adjustment layer is that you will really kind of bring up uh, any sort of imperfections in the luminosity of the skin. Like if I, for example, turn this off, you can see that the skin looks fine. Even if we darken it down here, this is, this is the brightening layer, this is our darkening layer. So even with that, you can see the skin looks perfectly fine. But as soon as we introduce this channel mixer, it's really kind of highlighting any sort of imperfections in the skin. So any, you know, luminosity shifts, they're really gonna pop out even more. So what you may wanna do in this case is if you're planning on going that route, you may wanna throw an extra uh, dodge and burn stack in here in the black and white conversion and just do a little extra dodging and burning. Uh, the reason I wouldn't apply that dodging and burning to your base stack for the color image is that without that turned on, the color image may kind of have some dodging and burning that's done unnecessarily and it's, it might actually adversely affect it. So that dodging and burning should be specific to just your black and white conversion with this channel mixer applied. I wouldn't do it on your kind of base dodge and burn stack. So that's just kind of a little tip there. Uh, if you want something that just looks a little more raw, you don't have to do the extra dodging and burning. I'm just kind of mentioning it to you that, you know, juicing up the image that way really just brings out even more and more uh, shifts in luminosities within the skin. So it's, it's something you may need to address. So that's really all I wanted to cover here. Those are kind of the main things that I use, any sort of combination of those different techniques. Uh, feel free to sort of experiment with them and see what you like, what looks good for you. Every image will vary. If it's high key, low key, uh, it will kind of, you know, dictate what you use. But feel free to experiment with all of those in different combinations and see what you like. So hopefully you found that helpful. If you like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up below. And if you love the video, make sure that you hit subscribe so that you get future video updates just like this one. Bye for now.